if you've been suffering from symptoms that you have from a concussion for more than 10 to 14 days, or you've been diagnosed with post-concussion syndrome, this video is definitely for you. Hey everyone, Dr. Kevin Leach here. Welcome to the Chiropractic Deep Dive Podcast. This is the Upper Cervical Research Show. This is show number five. So with Dr. Evans, he and I will be going over a paper going over post-concussion syndrome and how the neck is involved and most likely involved with post-concussion syndrome. Okay, welcome back everyone to the Upper Cervical Chiropractic Research Show. This is episode number five. I'm Dr. Kevin Leach and I'm here once again with Dr. Tyler Evans. How are you, sir? I'm well. Good to see you again. Fantastic. All right. So this episode's research review is titled The Role of the Upper Cervical Spine in Post-Concussion Syndrome by Cameron M. Marshall et al. Uh, published in the journal The, uh, the Physician and Sports Medicine, which is a peer-reviewed journal indexed in PubMed. Dr. Evans, as usual, you want to give us a uh, little overview of the paper and it's, uh, what it's trying to explain and its goals? Yes. So this is a amazing paper that was done by, um, it looks like mostly, I, I believe they're all medical doctors. And the one that I know of, John Letty, um, he is one of the foremost concussion specialists in the country. And he was involved heavily with the, um, the NFL studies when all this started to uh, come out with the NFL probably, I don't know now, maybe 15 years ago. So he, he's been involved in the concussion discussion across the country now for a, for a long time. And he was the guy that developed the Buffalo treadmill test, which is one of the kind of foundational heart rate tests um, for con post-concussion concussion, uh, work. So I really believe in the upper cervical profession and in the chiropractic world, this is a paper that every chiropractor should know. This is a paper that anyone that deals with uh, concussion patients, they should know this paper, they should know the information in it uh, because it can help you better take care of your patients. And so uh, this paper just starts out by listing some of the statistics about concussion. So a mild traumatic brain injury or concussion has an estimated prevalence of about 3.8 million per year. That's 3.8 million people. Um, and in the majority of cases, um, concussions, uh, symptoms resolve within 7 to 10 days. However, in a roughly 10 to 15 percent of the concussion uh, concussion patients, uh, these symptoms pro prolong and they go long longer than a month. And when they do, that's what we call post-concussion syndrome. And that is a, that's an important thing because if the, the symptoms aren't healing, uh, it's really important that we take a, a, another look and we um, change our course of treatment or, or care uh, to get the patient the best result. And, you know, in our office, and I'm sure in your office, you probably work with other uh, healthcare professionals who deal in, in this sort of uh, realm. I mean, we work with a guy in our area in the seacoast of New Hampshire that uh, he's one of the leading, um, he's the leading head neck injury guy in the area. So when a child comes in and they've had a concussion, um, he checks them out. And so we, you know, we brought this paper to him. We wanted to make sure he was aware of it uh, because it's important for doctors that are dealing with these patients to know that the neck might actually have a big part to play in these symptoms prolonging and not getting better. Um, and so in this paper, Dr. Letty and the handful of other doctors here, Cameron Marshall and the other doctors, they, um, they go through and really look at, and actually, yeah, looking at it now, um, these are, there's a, there's a chiropractor here. So Department of Graduate Studies of Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, and that's Cameron Marshall. It's got a, a chiropractic filter that we're looking through this. So when we look at the spine, we look at alignment. If the bones, of, bones in the spine are out of alignment, it can affect how the body works and the nerves especially. So in this paper, 
they, they in, immediately break down uh, the G's, so the, 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 the force that is put through the neck when there is a concussion. And when you have a concussion, you have a, a massive amount of energy and force that's put through the head as well as the neck. And so in this, they outline that, well, roughly 60 to 160 G's is what it takes to get a concussion. That's a lot of force. So um, I pulled it up right here on, uh, on Wikipedia, uh, which may not be the best source, but I mean, we're gonna be in the ballpark here. An untrained ind individual not used to the, the G straining maneuver can black out between four and six Gs if they're in a plane. So like pilots, four and six Gs blacks out a pilot. Okay, so we're talking about 60 to 160 Gs of force. So obviously that's gonna cause some damage. Well, they always look in the brain, right? If we're, we're having a concussion, we look at the brain. Well, in this paper, they outline, maybe the neck is involved. Maybe we should look at the neck. And they talk about examining whiplash associated disorders. So whenever we talk about whiplash, we're not talking about Whiplash isn't the name of the problem. Whiplash is the name of the way that the problem occurs. So whiplash associated disorder, disorders are what occur after you have a whiplash type accident. And in a whiplash type accident, it only takes 4.5 Gs to damage or uh, change the ligaments and soft tissue of the neck. And so that's a, a big red flag for, hey, if you've had a head or neck injury, if you've had a head injury and you've had a concussion, more than likely you have had a whiplash injury as well, um, a whiplash associated disorder. And so they're saying, okay, well, if we look at these, uh, if we look at these uh, symptoms, so if you look on the second page of this paper and, and uh, if anyone out there needs access to this paper, we can help you find it. Um, because I believe that it is tough to find now online. When I found it initially, it was, it was right there in PubMed. Um, but these symptoms overlap. So when you talk about signs and symptoms of concussion or post-concussion uh, syndrome, and then we talk about signs and symptoms of whiplash associated disorders, headache, headache, numbness, uh, let's see, uh, pressure in the head, um, let's see, headache, you know, they're very similar, numbness and tingling, numbness and tingling, nausea and, and dizziness, not dizziness and unsteadiness. You know, they're, they're, they're overlapping. So it's really, really hard to suss out unless you're doing a physical exam on a patient and seeing, do they have a problem in their neck? Is there something in the neck that might actually be going on causing these symptoms as well? And obviously the brain is a big part of this, right? So when, there's, when we have the, the, the shearing of the tissue in the brain, we have the, the cascade of, of uh, chemicals that then are released in the brain. And that's what initially what we think is part of that, the brain concussion, you know, the, the tissue that gets injured. But the neck might have a lot to do with this and, and a big reason why patients aren't getting well outside of this 30-day uh, criteria. The paper goes on and it talks about the four cases that they study. They, they study four cases where they, uh, five, oh yeah, okay, sorry, yeah, there's five, five cases there. And I, I believe that in uh, almost all of those cases, they had some sort of neck intervention for uh, some sort of either soft tissue therapy or spinal manipulative therapy, uh, which would be an adjustment from a chiropractor. Uh, and, and the patients did observe a, a good uh, change in their symptoms. So, you know, it's just a, a great breakdown on, on from John Letty, from this, this amazing source of information for post-concussion syndrome uh, that, hey, look, there might be something going on in the neck when this stuff isn't getting better. Uh, so, you know, that's what yeah, I Yeah, you know, uh, a good, you know, it's it, when we think about that 15 to 20 or 10 to 15 percent of that small percentage of concussion patients that go on to have the PCS or post-concussion syndrome, it's easy to say, well, those are the ones that need to get their neck checked out. But as you just said, 60 to 160 Gs of force can cause a concussion four to six, uh, or you know, I think in the paper it says 4.5 Gs is 4 as little as they've seen to cause a neck injury. It begs the, the necessity of actually 
getting everyone's neck checked who has a concussion, right? That I think that's a that's a huge. I feel like it's again with the work that we do with upper cervical chiropractic and working in the cranial cervical junction. It's once again it's a missing piece mm -hmm. of the puzzle that should be checked because even if somebody goes through the concussion and get 100% resolution of symptoms. It doesn't mean they didn't get a neck injury. That's just not creating symptoms now that could create problems in the future. I mean, I'm sure how many times have you had a patient come in and you say accidents, injuries, car accidents, nope, nope, nope. It takes some x-rays and you see that they've definitely had damage and injury to their spine over time. So, and unfortunately a lot of these people they're not told that they need to have their spine checked and they, they need to have their spine checked because it creates problems in the future. I always tell people it's the straw that broke the camel's back. They say, Oh, well, I've, I haven't had neck pain until six months ago and I'm 45 and you look at their neck on their x-ray and you're just like, this has been a problem for decades now. Okay. And it's the straw that broke the camel's back. So, I mean, this is just one of the mechanisms of a whiplash that, that people should consider getting their spine and their neck checked uh, for an injury and get it and get it treated uh, accordingly. Absolutely. I wrote down a couple just discussion points here. So they put in the paper, the definition of, of PCS or post-concussion syndrome is the persistence of three or more symptoms for four weeks. Now, why is it say four weeks when it says that most or that concussion symptoms should resolve within 10 to 14 days. Why is there a discrepancy there? Do you know anything about that? Uh, I think that part of the problem is that concussion is such a gray science still. They're still learning, you know? And so if you talk to, uh, you know, this doctor, they might play under these rules of this is what concussion is, or this is what post-concussion is. And, and I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, we're not, we're not agreeing that uh, post-concussion syndrome, syndrome happens. Well, it makes sense with the vast amount of symptoms that you could possibly have with a concussion, especially when you're dealing with head stuff and dizziness, vertigo, headache, all that kind of stuff. I mean, how many different mm -hmm. providers treat those symptoms? So, and I think a part of the problem too is, I think in our, our, healthcare and in our, our daily lives anymore, there's a lot more emphasis put on uh, genetics or, you know, the, the, um, the more I was made this way. And so this is just, this is just, uh, this is how I was made. And, and, and so there's no way for me to, to do anything about this other than through drugs or surgery. And what Dr. Letty is stepping out in this paper. What he's doing is he's saying, hey, accidents occurring in life <clears throat> may actually affect the spine. And there has been, you know, differences of, of opinion over the last hundred years as to whether or not the spine can actually even go out of alignment. So, you know, I think John Letty is probably a little bit ahead of his time in terms of uh, a, a medical doctor who's putting himself out there and, and uh, saying like, hey, there may be some good science behind getting the spine worked on in a conservative means to help the brain and the body work better, right? So I think, you know, I think it, it, it's where does, where does your, your research come from? Where, does your, where, do, where do your studies in PubMed come from? I think it just depends on the source and, and what, what their training is, what their background is. And, and uh, I think Dr. Letty has a very progressive, uh, more conservative uh, uh, view. And he wants to, uh, to, to get the word out there that, you know, if this stuff isn't getting better, go get checked out by, by a manual therapist, by somebody who's going to work on the spine, work on the muscles, uh, and help that part of the body. Let's go over, let's go over the mechanism here. So people might think, yeah. let's just connect some dots as yeah. far as a cervicogenic, meaning coming from the neck. 
<clears throat> component too. Like, I mean, that's what the paper is all about. It's proposing, hey, listen, it, when it's not the brain anymore, it's the neck. And, you know, you could injure the soft tissues in the neck from a whiplash, right, which would be a whiplash associated disorder. Just real simply, I mean, we're not going to get into anatomy lessons here, but when you think about coming from the neck and how it can be affected, there's the paper talks about two main ways that an injury to the neck could create these problems, pain related and, and the other proprioceptive related. So when, it, when they talk about a pain related mechanism coming from the neck and neck pain, and there's, we know that pain from the neck can cause headaches. It's called a cervicogenic headache. And we know that those exist and we see those patients all the time. So that, that, that connection is, is pretty simple there. Uh, and then there's the proprioceptive related mechanisms. And for those listening who don't know proprioception, mechanoreception, these are the mechanisms inside the joint, inside the body that send signals to the brain letting it know where the body is. So it's, when we think about that mechanism being involved with dizziness, you can make sense if there's, if there's nerves and there's things telling the brain where the body is in space. You know, I, I, I tell patients all the time when, they, when, when, I, when I talk about this, I just have them close their eyes. And I say, okay, close your eyes. And they're closing their eyes. And I say, okay, do you know where your left hand is? And they say, okay, yeah. Well, how do you know you're not looking at it, right? And so your right. body's telling your brain where things are. Right. When these proprioceptive mechanisms can be injured or interfered with, that's when you can get that sense of either a dizziness, unbalance, a sense of vertigo, because that communication and that, that proper communication between your brain and wherever that injured tissue is could be interfered with, which, gives you, which would give you that symptom. And so um, that's, where, that's where these neck injuries can be correlated to these symptoms that people are having after that window of concussion into post-concussion syndrome. Any yeah, comments on that? <clears throat> yeah, so I've sat in actually. So the Cantu Institute, uh, uh, Robert Cantu, he's, uh, in my opinion, he's kind of the, the, uh, the other very progressive, very open, uh, conservative uh, uh, research guy for concussion, as, especially for the NFL, um, and and was right there with John Letty, I believe, you know, way back. If if I'm uh, in the right zone, um, I believe I am. But uh, uh, Cantu, uh, he puts on once a year, or at least the, one of the hospitals down there around him in Boston puts on a, a concussion symposium, and I've gone down to two of them. And it's fascinating because they have a whole hierarchical way that they describe concussion, right? And so, um, yeah, we've got the neuro neurometabolic cascade and the, uh, the, the- Which is actually in, described in, sorry to cut you off, but it's described in figure one, the whole yeah. cascade effect of the concussion right. and, and what happens. Right, so it's an energy mismatch and that's really why we have fatigue. That's why we have the- you know, the memory loss, we've got, we've got all these weird uh, brain symptoms. But then why do these problems persist? Well, the, if, if the patient doesn't get better, well, they break it down and they put it into this hierarchy of, okay, well, how should we treat the patient? Because they want to get results, right? And, and they see, oh, some of these cases, so some of these cases do really great with uh, vestibular therapy. Some of these cases do really well with uh, ocular therapy or, or uh, you know, op a special uh, optometric help, uh, either uh, light, uh, uh, lens, different lens colors, uh, different exercises for the eyes, uh, and, then, and then the cervicogenic ones, right? So maybe a, a chiropractic adjustment. Uh, oftentimes this is more in the PT realm, so they're, so they're talking about doing PT to the neck, uh, which is great and, and all. Um, but, you know, we're, we're approaching this from a, a, a neck situation, right? In this model, the neck can actually drive the eyes, the inner ear, and the brain to have dysfunction. So when we look at the neck, it's a big part of the, the 
I, you know, if you want to call it a three-legged stool, right? So you've got the inner ear, you've got the eyes, and then you've got the cervical spine. The cervical spine drives a lot of input into the brain, into the eyes, into the ear about where things are at in space. And so you can have the uh, trigeminal cervical nucleus driving that input into the brain. That's the, the largest, the trigeminal cervical nucleus is the largest input for that, that nerve into the brain as well as then you can have a, a vestibular problem, a, a cervicogenic vestibular problem because the neck is actually causing the inner ear to be off. Or you can have a, uh, what's called an oculocervical reflex where the, the neck is causing the eyes to be off, right? And so then you get visual disturbances. You get, I'm, I know you probably see it all the time. I see it as well. I work with these therapists that, that focus on these areas. And if I'm not getting a patient well, what do I do? I send them to the eye person. I send them to the inner ear person. And between the, the handful of us, we can get good results. But alone, it's not as great, right? So this is just about getting better results for patients. And, and we see that the neck is a big component and uh, it can drive a lot of these other um, you know, symptoms as well as a lot of these other problems that are um, you know, the stool legs for balance and proprioception in the body, in the brain. Just because we did the, the hydrodynamics paper recently. Yeah, yeah. Thinking about that choking off of the CSF fluid, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the whole, you know, the cascading effect and the oxidative stress and the neuron imbalancing, ion imbalancing that happens with the concussion, Mm. Body needs to heal through that for seven to 14 days. A lot of the people that don't know that the neck could be a contributing factor to these post-concussion symptoms, they, they talk about how there are four mechanisms that they say to try to explain it. And one of them is the continued decrease in ATP and metabolic production. Number mm -hmm. two is the continued axonal dysfunction. Number three is the continued uh, ANS dysfunction or autonomic nervous system dysfunction. And then the other one is, is altered blood flow. Mm. And it's important to understand that just as a real quick side note, that when during a concussion, it's mechanical damage, not structural damage to the neurons, right? If we think about, you know, we've talked about this before, mechanical uh, meaning, you know, the ions and things that are, that are functioning, not, it's not the actual breakdown or damage to the actual nerve, right? So right. it's not okay. structural, yeah. it's more mechanical. <clears throat> right. Anyway. anyway, it talks about, you know, as, you know, these, especially that last one altered blood flow uh, being a potential ongoing symptom. And we can tie that into the interference of the hydrodynamics of the entire spine from the misalignment from the injury meaning that even if it isn't, even if it's not an injury to the actual proprioception or the pain reception in the neck that's causing these problems, if there was a misalignment, if that is choking off the CSF flow and the secondary venous outflow in that whole Arterial. system, yeah. that could lead to an extended period of concussion symptoms as well, which could be also categorized as the post-concussion syndrome. All this is making come in full circle you know this is all come in full circle to explain these mechanisms and 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 all of this makes sense to anyone who knows how the body works and so i i hope that this this research gets more and more you know spread out to people so that we can you know we can like you're like you're doing like i'm doing so we can co-manage these patients and really you know find really the mechanism of of that individual uh, and getting everything corrected, you know, doing intervention to get things back to fully functioning in every way, which Absolutely. sometimes can be just getting rid of the cause and fixing the, you know, the injury. And sometimes you need more therapy, like the, the ocular therapy or the balance therapy or things like that to try to, you know, retrain and rehab the body back to where it should be. So mm -hmm. I thought that was a good point to bring up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a great point. And it's, you know, and that's why it's important to understand this literature, uh, especially for doctors, you know, it's patients, yeah, but, you know, if, if other, other chiropractors, other, um, 
neurologists, um, the, uh, the guy that we work with here in, in the Seacoast area, uh, he is a uh, uh, osteopath and uh, he works at a rehab concussion center. And, you know, it's like, this is, this is top of the crop, good research, you know, obviously it's not a randomized controlled trial, but I mean, there's, there's a great uh, layout here of, of all the research to look at and, and, and five case studies where we saw good changes in symptoms. Uh, and it wasn't just one therapy, it was many different things put together, but the neck was a foundational support for it. So, and that, and that's what, that's what they did in this paper no, with the five, yeah. That's with yeah. the five different patients, <clears throat> right? Um, you know, sometimes it's difficult when 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 five or six things are done immediately. You know, right. for one thing to to re, you know to really understand what was the problem, but important that they got better with with whatever with whatever it was. I just the only thing I think about is time and cost effectiveness of totally potentially doing all of those things <clears throat> is kind of initially when yeah. maybe they're not all maybe they're not all necessary however and you probably agree with me about this a lot of people will come in uh, patients will come in they'll say okay what are the percentages or what are the chances that this is going to help mm. and you know i always tell them i say listen we th there's a i can do an exam for your spine to see if there's an issue with your spine that i can help you with to get your body functioning better whether that's going to be the factor of correcting the symptom and getting, getting that symptom corrected that you're looking to get corrected, I have no idea. Well, we, have to, we have to get your spine fixed, give it time, see how much it corrects. And if it doesn't, then we can you know, try some other things or refer you over here for some therapy or you know, go that way. I don't know of any exams that can really pinpoint specifically you know oh like you've got you've got headaches well let's do this exam to see if it's related to your spine i mean oh, do you right, know right, right. do you see what i'm well, saying yeah with concussion patients i mean we go through the the saccades so vestibular ocular reflex and uh you can you can test vertical and horizontal saccades and um you know, if those are popping up, if you're having convergence insufficiency, if someone's having a pretty positive Romberg's test where they're just, they're off to one side real quick. I mean, that's a, that's a very quick indicator that one, they have a brain injury and two, their cervical spine is probably not giving good information into their brain and, and their inner ear might be a little bit off and the eyes might be a little bit off too. So then, you just start a course of treatment and keep testing and see, okay, is that changing? Uh, if it's not, then we can go down a treatment path for that, that issue, right? So I always tell my patients, you know, give it four to eight weeks, we'll do a re-exam and we'll see where things are at. And then we'll, we'll refer out based on how you're feeling and, and what you would like to accomplish next. But I always say, hey, you got to keep your neck in alignment to continue the momentum, keep the stability of what we've done, because you want to maintain that momentum. But we want to see those, those, those uh, neurological tests get better, and we almost always do. Um, so, you know, percentage-wise, I, I know that our post-concussion sy syndrome patients, I mean, they don't get 100% better with us every time. But we see a good, you know, I would say 60 to 70 percent uh, of people get good results. And then the other, you know, 30 to 40 percent, um, they need some other therapies and maybe 10 percent. Um, they're really affected in, in some other way. Right. And so just keeping their spine in alignment is helpful, but it's not going to be the thing that's going to get, you know, it's not going to get them to home base. Right. But uh but it's, it's, it's a big piece of the puzzle. I mean, you're talking about the cervical spine. It's the, the, the foundation of the head and, and the brain, right? So, I mean, it's a big driver. Uh, so. Yeah, awesome. Any other points that you think we've missed with the paper? Anything else to discuss or any, any details that we might want to go over? Uh, you know, I think 
getting imaging for this is really important. I think that, uh, uh, you know, just to reiterate, and we'll probably talk about this on our next video, so check out the next video. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but radiographic imaging of some sort, so what, you know, whether it be x-ray, MRI, or CT, or cone beam CT, that sort of information can help you suss out what else is going on here? You know, is there is there some whiplash problem that's that's been going on for a long time, and this has made it worse? And uh, we'll talk about the importance of X-ray in the in the next uh, video. But um, you know, for a chiropractor taking care of someone's spine, uh, measuring the misalignment specifically, and doing a specific correction, especially 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 in the craniocervical junction where you know, every millimeter counts, every millimeter matters. Um, so getting good imaging, whether it be upright MRI, digital motion x-ray, uh, good, good upper cervical x-rays, um, that gives you a better treatment plan, better, better course of action, so. Yeah, so what would you say if someone's listening to this and they've got, you know, they're suffering with that post-concussion syndrome and they're like, this is, this is me. What's their first step to getting help? Well, definitely look up an upper cervical chiropractor uh, in your area. You can go to upcspine.com and then there's a doctor locator or practitioner locator as well as uh, uppercervicalcare.com. That's the other one. Um, and that has a doctor locator as well. And, um, you know, that'll, that'll be a good way to get started. Most upper cervical chiropractors are going to be a good guide and help you find the care that you need, especially, uh, you know, those that are involved with uh, NUCA, the Blair Organization, Atlas Orthogonal, Advanced Orthogonal, Epic, Knee Chest, um, Toggle. These are, these are the, the techniques that you're going to want to look for. And, I hope I didn't leave anybody out there. Well, uh, I was going to say we did a video on a prosthesis of upper cervical. Oh, so if the, right. whoever's listening uh, didn't, <clears throat> right. didn't see that, then they can go and listen to that and they can get a better idea of how to, to find and, and, what, yeah. and how to know that you're in an upper cervical chiropractic office. Yeah. And they're going to be a good guide for you. You know, they'll, they'll really help you uh, uh, navigate this. Uh, this it, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a scary thing. It, I, I had three people this morning uh, that have gotten fantastic results in our office as well as with some of the referrals that we've given them. And uh, you know, I had a guy this morning that's playing guitar again. It's been three years since uh, he got kicked in the head by, by a kid because he's an occupational therapist and um, he hasn't been able to play guitar. He hasn't been able to play with his kid and he's playing with his kid again. He's playing guitar. I mean, he brought his son in, his son's you know laughing and having a good time and it's like, you know, people get their lives back. It's awesome. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Any last thoughts, conclusions with the paper here? No, I think that's good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you once again for your time. Good, sir. Once again, uh, anybody who's listening, uh, drop a like. Likes really, really help the videos. And if it's helped you, drop a like, drop a comment, subscribe and all that. It the more that you interact with the video, the more people just like you, if you're getting help with this, are going to find the videos as well. So we really appreciate that. That's why we're doing this. We're trying to bring value to the community, to the world, and, uh, and to people who, who need this kind of help to change lives, just like, just like you said, Tyler. So, uh, so yeah, so great. Uh, thank you for your time, and we'll see you soon.